What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys one of my most favorite recent decks and that is Sword Soul. Now I guess Sword Soul is not that recent. However, this is not your typical Sword Soul list. This is a blind go second OTK Sword Soul deck profile. So what I mean by that is yes, you can make Baron and Chi Chao going first with maybe a blackout set, but is that really good enough for today's format or do we just want to play some of the most busted hand traps in today's format? Stop our opponent from making a board and and then just go in for the OTK. So that's what today's deck profile is. If you guys do enjoy these kind of videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. You'll see it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to tune in for more. And with that being said, I don't want to take up too much time. So with that, let's get into the deck profile. All right, so to get into the deck profile here, I'm going to go a little bit in depth once we get into the later portions of the deck profile. You guys can see that there's some text that you don't use usually see in sword soul however let's get right into it we are starting off with three incredible ecclesia of course the reason you have to play three is because you want to go second incredible ecclesia is a special summon for you when your opponent controls more monsters so this card pretty much provides you to access your combo without having to use your normal summon which is extremely powerful especially if you're going for an otk right so that's why you're playing three of this we're playing three moye of course three long yuan two taie three emergence as well as one sword soul blackout i think this is a pretty standard ratio i wouldn't play one taie I know some people were trying to play one Taie. In this build, you really want to play two. Drawing Taie is actually not that bad in this build. When you're special summoning your Ecclesia going second, and then that's going to get you into a Moye, having a Taie in hand is really nice because it gives you an extra normal summon, an extra body that you can use after you've used your incredible Ecclesia. So that's why I like to play the two Taie. Three Emergence, of course, as well as the one Blackout. Now, I know we are playing a Go Second deck. However, I'm still liking to play the one Blackout. This is mostly because if you do get your Blackout in the graveyard, let's say with something like a Taie, you can actually banish the Blackout a lot of the time to get an extra token on your side of the field, which helps you play through Hand Trap. So if you guys don't know, let's just say you have a Blackout in the graveyard and you have Taie on board. You activate Taie Effect to banish the Blackout because it is cost to banish the Blackout, right? And they go Effect Veiler or Imperm on your Taie. Blackout is going to get to activate the Special Summon a token for you, so it doesn't really matter if they have that hand trap right so blackout is really good in that sense also if you don't end up otking your opponent you are going to put them at low life points and then what ends up happening is blackout is just that extra piece of protection that you're going to end up beating your opponent with right so that's why you're playing the one blackout then for the 10 years we're playing three ashuna three vishuda vishuda obviously is the best one going second you really want to play three of this this of course helps you break boards super easily and then we're only playing two adhara again in a going second build you really want to make room for hand traps and going second cards so you don't want to max out on the tennies. You don't want to play three Adhara, Chathana, plus the Heavenly Circle. You don't need all that kind of stuff. You really just want to stop your opponent from being able to make boards because this deck can put up a lot of damage really quickly. And so for that reason, you just need to only play the two Adhara. You'd rather not even draw this one. It's just a really good one that you can grab off of your Ashuna. And then worst case scenario becomes a monk for you, right? And then we're playing two Pot of Desires. I'm going to be real with you guys. I do not like this card at all. I'm only playing the two Desires because you have to. There's no real draw power in this deck. So that's why we're playing the desires however i'm going to get into this in just a second once we go through the hand traps because i want to explain what a couple different variations or different things you guys can do in this deck and it has to do with the triple tactics talents that you guys can see here in the side deck obviously this is not something you're going to be playing in the side deck it's going to be an option that i'm going to give you guys just we'll get to it in a second but for the hand traps here we are playing three ash blossom of course the most generic hand trap three dd crow which is just the best hand trap in today's format so you have to be playing three of this and then we're playing three nibiru now nibiru is obviously very powerful in today's format but but Telemus just got a new card, Rule Kalos, Lulu Kalos with the OCG name, but Rule Kalos, which is the TCG name, and that card pretty much stops your opponent from being able to Nibiru your board. Now, Nibiru was really good into the Telemus matchup. It was also really good into the Sprite matchup, which is why I'm still playing it, because your opponent has to read that you have the Nibiru, and then they have to go into the Rule Kalos before you're able to Nib anyways. So don't get me wrong, even though they have that card that now protects them from Nibiru, Nibiru is just overall really, really powerful in today's format. And so that's the reason why we're going to be playing three nibiru and then of course you're playing three infinite impermanence imperm is just a really really good card especially if you're also forced to go first you just play imperm but imperm is really good because it's a hand trap but going second if you draw it as your sixth card it acts as a board breaker for you you know let's say you draw it your opponent has a totally awesome on board or they have just an omni negate on board you can just start off your turn by activating imperm which is going to get rid of that negate so automatically this is kind of like a board breaking card as well and then we're playing the one change of heart okay this is what i'm going to explain the one change of heart the one heartbeats feather duster as well as the one called by the grave now let me explain this 
this real quick. Mystic Mine is still very relevant in today's format, and there's a lot of trap decks also as well. So I do like playing the one Mystic Mine out, which is Harpy's Feather Duster. This also outs Floodgates and other kind of trap based decks. So that's why I like playing the one. Change of Heart actually makes a lot of sense in this deck because Change of Heart, it doesn't stop you from attacking with the card you take. It doesn't stop you from synchro summoning with the monster you take. So if you just activate your Change of Heart, take a really big beefy monster your opponent controls or a monster that you would rather not attack over or get over through card effect because sometimes those kind of cards have card effects when they leave the field so for that reason if you just change a heart you take it it puts an extra body on your side of the field that you can now push for more damage so that's why i really like playing the one change of heart i know it's just a one of but i think it makes a lot of sense in these going second decks and it does come up really really clutch now remember when i was talking about the ttt just before we get into the extra deck i do want to talk about ttt a little bit all right so triple tactics talent is a really good card this format as well tier limits is going to be playing a lot on your turn you have a lot of decks in general that play a lot on your turn you have flunderies that plays a lot on your turn as well you have exo sister that plays a lot on your turn as well so there's a lot of decks that do play on your turn so for that reason ttt is actually really good in today's format now you guys can do one of two things right you can take out the nibiru's completely and play three ttt over three nibiru if you think that's the better option if you don't think nibiru is good into the rule colors then you guys can do that however i will say this a lot of the time if you don't have a nibiru let's say let's say you have the ttt instead and your opponent is going first and then they go into the curious with the epidemic eradicator virus what ends up happening is these spell cards in your hand don't really matter so for that reason i tried to you guys can see i tried to limit the amount of spell cards we play that's why we're not playing board breakers as well because dark ruler no more super poly first of all super poly is going to trigger all of the tier element effects if you do use super poly but on top of that a lot of people like to play around super poly or worst case scenario your tier limits opponent is going to use eradicator and then the super poly doesn't matter right so for that reason i'm not playing board breakers more so than i am playing the hand traps but again remember how i said i don't like desires but desires provides a draw engine for the deck that the deck otherwise doesn't have well ttt also kind of provides you with a draw engine so if you guys want to play ttt over desires you guys can play this deck at 41 cards take out the two desires play the three ttt i just want to give you guys different options this build of the deck i've been really liking and i would not cut these i'm going to tell you right now i would not suggest cutting these three spells for the three triple tack because of course we know called by the grave is really important in just a lot of different situations and again you do kind of sometimes want to have a main deck mystic mine out or a main deck floodgate out and harpy's feather does so it gives that to you and then again the one change of heart i really like this card i you you guys are gonna be surprised how powerful this card is when you play it so really i think you guys should try this one out but yeah again that's just the ttt i kind of explained a little bit more in depth but i think this is the section of the deck profile that needed to be explained a little bit more the sword soul and tiny stuff kind of just makes sense right so it's just really this that i think is really good in today's format moving on to the extra deck here we are playing of course two sword soul grandmaster chi chow one of the g Ching Long Yuan. I always just call it Sinister Long Yuan. I don't know if I'm saying the right names wrong, but yeah, we're playing Sinister Long Yuan, of course, as well as the one Cheng Yang. Cheng Yang is also always really good for OTKing your opponent. It also does synergize with Pot of Desires pretty well, so that's why I like to play the one Cheng Yang, and I like to play the Desires as well. But of course, if you're not OTKing your opponent, I'll be honest with you, the card that I tend to go into a lot, because at this point, let's say you're going second, you break your opponent's board, you do a ton of damage. Even if you're not OTKing your opponent, you do put up enough damage where they're really playing on 2000 life points 1500 life points and then you can just make the sinister long you on and then if you're making the sinister long you on in this kind of situation what ends up happening is your opponent's pretty much going to lose if they just activate any card right unless they have a kaiju if they activate any card they're going to lose the game so for that reason i really like this card as well and changing of course is always really good for otk your opponent i am still playing the one chow fang and the two baxia baxia is really really powerful going second just shuffling cards your opponent controls is just so powerful 2300 beater again you're always going to be trying to go for otk with this deck i am still playing the one chow fang with the baxia because if you are forced to go first chow fang is really powerful but also if you're afraid your opponent has a nibiru because again nibiru is going to be very relevant in today's format you can actually just start off your turn by making the chow fang chow fang is still 2800 body for you so if you can start off your turn by making the chow fang and then now making it so that your opponent can nibiru you it becomes very powerful then we're playing the one draco berserker also another really good card the one crimson blader now why are we playing the crimson blader this is the spanko sauce i'm going to be honest with you this is my sauce this is my tech this is my spice i really like crimson blader in today's format so first of all i know despia is not that prominent anymore but against the despia matchup you make this you attack over your opponent's monster they're not playing the game all right you know what other deck doesn't play the game if you go crimson blader on them flunderies you know another deck that can't play the game if you go crimson blader on them tier limits so for that reason i think crimson blader is very powerful if you have an extra level eight on the board that you can make let's say you already gone through your incredible ecclesia you go into moye you go into chichao you do all your typical combos or 
or you've gone your Tenyu route first into Boxia, shuffle cards your opponent controls, etc, etc. You guys can make your Crimson Blader later on, and let's say you know you're not going to be able to go for game. Let's say you know you're not going to be able to push for enough damage, so you OTK your opponent in one turn. You can go for a Crimson Blader, and then if you Crimson Blader attack over an opponent's monster, a lot of the time against some of these decks that I mentioned earlier, it's basically an FTK. They just can't play on their following turn. So that's why I really like Crimson Blader. It's a very techie card, very spicy card, but trust me, when it comes up, it's insane. Of course, we're playing the one Baron. Baron's also just really good going second. The fact that you can just make it and pop a card is just very powerful, so that's why Baron. And then we're playing the one Psychic and Punisher. There is some level modulation in this deck with your Sword Soul Emergence. You guys can swap this really for anything, but I do like Psychic and Punisher because it is a game finisher sometimes, so that's why this card's very powerful. And then we're playing the one Shaman of the Tenyi, as well as three Monk of the Tenyi. This is pretty self-explanatory. I know I went a little bit in depth with the Hand Trap lineup, the TTTs, explaining different situations where they can come in, but I think it's really important to understand that this deck, as at its core, is just Sword Soul. The really only thing that changes, and this is really good because if you want to play a deck like this, let's say in three, four months, let's say you guys are watching this video five, six months from now, and the format's changed completely, what ends up happening is all you have to do is change the hand traps in this deck for cards that are going to be relevant in that format. So let's just say that format ends up becoming a floodgate based, trap based format, and then you know DD Crow and Imperm are actually not that powerful. You can just sub these out for back row hate, play Cosmic Cyclone, play Twin Twisters, play Lightning Storms, etc. etc. If in the next format, you know, Board Breakers becomes relevant, Super Poly becomes really important, then you can play Super Poly. So for that reason, I just want to say that these cards right here, the Ash, DD Crow, Nib, and Imperm, these are 12 cards that can always just be swapped out depending on what the format is like. And then like I said, I I, like I, I'm gonna be honest man I have such a love-hate relationship with desires sometimes I really want to take it out there are times where you literally banish your soul soul names and it just hurts so maybe you guys can take this out play the TTTs instead but again it's always up to just personal preference I just wanted to give you guys that option again I really think you guys should just try this deck out for yourselves because not only do I think it's competitive but I also think it's just really really fun so that is it for today's video I hope you guys did enjoy now I gave you guys both the triple tactics tech as well as the Nibiru suggestion so you guys can do either one of those. However, it's the exact same premise for the deck. You really want to go second, stop your opponent from being able to make boards. The tennies provide you the ability to break boards, and then you can just OTK super easily with the Sword Soul engine. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. It is a competitive version to play Sword Soul in a blind go second way. If you guys have any ideas or suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you guys did enjoy because we do upload five days a week here on the channel. It also helps us grow. We want to get to 7,500 subscribers i know i believe in every single one of you i wouldn't be doing it without you truly i mean that so thank you guys and with that spanko side it out peace